Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Protect Your Agency Bottom Line. I'm Judy Howard, here with ARC and um, with Customer Experience, and I'm excited today because this is our second webinar in a session of 10 this month that we're having uh, in relation to our ARC Fraud Awareness Month, which has been our first ever. So thank you for joining us this afternoon, and we hope that you can join us for some of our other webinars. Uh, the, our next one will be next Wednesday, uh, Fight Fraud Against Collaboration. We'll also have one on the 13th, 14th, and all the way through to the 27th, where we'll end it with an expert panel, uh, True Cost of Fraud for Travel Agents. So if you can, each one of these sessions is gonna be different, so I encourage you to attend each one that you feel that interests you, these will all be recorded as well and posted on our fraud site. Uh, and as we get started here, I want to introduce some of my other colleagues that I have here with me this afternoon from ARC. We have Cornelius Hatting, who is the Director of Risk Management and Compliance at ARC. He has been with ARC for over a couple years now, and his team looks at the impact of fraud across both the travel agency and the airline channels. And he and his team really are the ones that put this whole month together for you. There will also be white papers, there will be other commentary that will be posted on our fraud site, arccorp.com, go to the fraud, air, the fraud page. There will be a lot of exciting things happening there. Cornelius also brings with him 17 years of experience that he's had in operations from startup to established firms, uh, in, and he has insights into risk management, and he's done this pretty much all over the globe, from Asia to Europe, the Middle East, Africa, the U.S., so he brings with us a wealth of experience, and so as we go through the presentation this afternoon, feel free to ask questions. At his side is Doug Nass. If some of you joined us for our webinar yesterday, he was the one that was the presenter. Um, Doug has been with ARC for over 25 years. 23 of those years have been spent in fraud prevention and awareness. So he, again, a great um, uh, person to ask any of these questions to uh, throughout the presentation this afternoon. And our guest presenter is um, Tony Ash. He's the Vice President of Business Development for Perseus, which is a global community-based fraud database assisting the industry in the fight against fraud and its impact on the travel sector's revenue. Uh, he brings with us years and years of experience. Um, Tony has worked in the areas of business development, marketing sales, project management at leading banks and financial firms, airlines and payment companies. He's also worked with IATA and GDSs. Tony brings with us a great amount of knowledge in the area of fraud, how to detect fraud, fraud prevention awareness. So he's gonna be our guest presenter today. We're really excited to have him here with us. Uh, and if you want to ask Tony, Cornelius, or Doug any questions during the presentation uh, this afternoon, go to the right-hand control panel where it says questions. Type them in throughout the presentation, and we're going to ask. Mo we're going to try to get to all your questions uh, through the presentation this afternoon. Again, welcome. And I'm going to, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you, Judy, Cornelius, and Doug, and thank you everyone for joining us in today's session. Uh, we're going to talk about the challenges and the opportunities that we recognize in the uh, the travel agent sector and uh, against the backdrop of increasing landscape of fraud uh, events and activities. Uh, the content of today's objectives, we've just done an intro. We're going to get into the fraud landscape, some of the travel agent challenges as we uh, establish them through a variety of surveys and work in this industry for several decades. Some of the industry initiatives and best practices that are being deployed by those uh, small and large in the major institutions as well too, and how to protect yourself. And then we'll try to save some room for a uh, roughly 10 minutes of some Q&A at the end of this session here. Ark and Perseus have teamed up together uh, uh, as we all live in this space of uh, fraud and trying to prevent it and curtail it and uh, have come to the recognition that we should increase the awareness of these fraud issues across the landscape with the airline carriers, the OTAs, the travel agent uh, community as well too. Uh, both organizations have served the airline community for many decades, and uh, now we're pleased to uh, support the value chain uh, that is uh, to share and participate in some of the best practices that we have a view of in our global perspective in servicing this travel sector. 
it's truly recognized the significant contribution that's made by the travel agent community. Often we know that there are not dedicated resources or budgets to address incoming fraud uh, attempts. And Perseus, in conjunction with ARC, intend to enable the community with both awareness and tools to combat fraud. In the roadmap, Perseus intends to provide a fraud-based analytical tool that is used currently by the larger institutions, but in a late version, soon to be available to the travel agent community and with respects to a travel agent's uh, budgets and capabilities. So we'll have more on that in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> About Perseus, we've got roughly 10 years uh, uh, in exclusively in this travel sector. We were founded by a group of airline carriers back in 2008 that safely wanted to exchange fraud data. Uh, that has grown to this point in time, 10 years later, from a simple fraud database to a very sophisticated suite of fraud prevention products that serve the worldwide community. Perseus and its database is travel sector exclusively. So we focus exclusively on the travel industry. And, and the verticals within that, airlines, hotels, OTAs, and such. Uh, in our partnership with ARC, we work to uh, empower the community with the tools and the awarenesses that they can use to help them curtail potential losses as well, too. For many years, our Perseus team and tools have been working and supporting the law enforcement community as well, too from Europol to Ameripol uh, in all continents. Uh, currently, we deal with about uh, law enforcement agencies in over 63 countries as they utilize our database to apprehend fraudsters in their day-to-day -day actions as well, too. Our mission statement is to enable real-time access to cross-border fraud data, and this is achieved through a community-based sharing between the stakeholders in the commercial payment and fraud industry. By sharing this data, merchants and the banks are able to prevent a considerable amount of cost related to fraud and their associated losses as well too. How big is the problem? Unfortunately, the problem is extremely large. It's estimated that one to 2% of all airline OTA booking attempts via online websites are of a fraud nature. This impacts our industry today in excess of $858 million per year. Approximately $639 million is borne by the airlines, and roughly $219 million drips down the, the, uh, the value chain, impacting the travel agent community. And this is a result of the many data leaks that have been taking place through the course of the last several years, many high-profile cases as well, too. More and more credit card information is available on the market. Prices for these stolen cards are on the decrease, given the fact that there's such a high quantity of them out there. It's estimated that the 45 million credit card uh, credentials that were taken out of the target environment three and a half years ago only 10% of them are on the marketplace at this point in time. So they have quite a reservoir of additional cards to issue when they uh, want to continue with their fraud activities. Across the entire global e-commerce space, over $1.1 million is lost every minute of every day as a result of fraud. This is a very, very impactful issue when it comes to our industry because our travel sector is the go-to industry to be able to monetize the, uh, 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 the activities of these fraudsters. How easy is it to become a fraudster? Unfortunately, it's a little bit too easy in today's day. Uh, you can easily search for credit card uh, access to buy credit card uh, uh, accounts and credentials. These are advertised publicly and further on the dark web as well, too. Uh, you look at a Mr. Dump, um, uh, Mr. Bin uh, dump store, you can buy credit cards that are full credentials at the rate of $9 for an Amex, $25 for a Visa business, 
and five to seven dollars for a Visa MasterCard, and they come with full credentials. They're paid for through Bitcoin, MoneyGram, Western Union, even PayPal as well too. And these fraudsters guarantee that these cards will work, and if they do not work, they will be replaced. And they have a support system, 24/7 customer service with each purchase. So if you buy a batch of cards and it and a hundred and it turns out nine of them didn't work, they will replace that nine in a baker's dozen and give you ten or eleven or twelve in replacement of that nine to hold on to their customers. It's a very, very sophisticated operation. It's very important to understand how big this operation is. For Sayus community and our team of subject matter experts, we work within a, an atmosphere of roughly around 700 analysts around the world. And often it is said that the fraudsters are one to two steps ahead of us and that often we are more reactive than we are proactive in being able to curve and curtail their actions. When you look at step one and the data breaches that have taken place, Yahoo's 500 million that have been breached, FriendFinder, MySpace, uh, UKU, the um, uh, um, the Equifax uh, breach, and uh, others as well too. They breach into these environments and the data that they get enables them to then combine this with other lists that they have from other data breaches. And therefore they start stuffing these credentials together and delivering them out into the marketplace to find out if they have a hit. They have roughly about a 2% success ratio on gaining access to these accounts that belong to the same users because we unfortunately take the simple approach to reuse and passwords time and time and time again. Once they have access to an account, they can get into a full-blown account takeover. These takeovers can be uh, a, a breach into one's financial products at their banks and make withdrawals and transfers. They can be done by way of accessing the credit card information further uh, and uh, performing transactions. They can also be used in a capacity that they reach into loyalty accounts which has been on the rise in the last 18 to 24 months, whereby they're breaching into loyalty accounts and cashing in tickets or transferring these balances over, converting them to gift cards, and then taking those gift cards out into the marketplace. They are a very sophisticated operation, often far more sophisticated than our uh, approaches that we're prepared to uh, uh, address for them. So they harvest these credentials, in a massive fishing expedition. They test the credentials and gain access to each, all, each of these accounts and effectively steal the assets. And actually they've been breaking into medical records in the last 12 to 14 months time frame. They also get into intellectual property in terms of uh, espionage uh, as well too. The, 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 the breaches are so massive we hear a few headlines from time to time, but when you put them all together, there are over there was over 2.9 billion data records leaked out in 2017. Uh, identity fraud hit a record of uh, 16.8 million victims in the U.S. market alone. The IRS has uh, suffered from that as well too, with 22 billion dollars in uh, fake returns that they paid on and then had to pay again when the true people came forward uh, with this uh, confirmed fraud breach. The credit card uh, uh, forum in itself experienced a tremendous amount of uh, point of sale e-commerce uh, fraud attempts. Its rise has been 81% over the last uh, uh, 12 months time frame. Account takeovers have tripled in 2017. And this is accredited to the fact that in 2016, 15, and 14, they were very successful with a variety of different enterprise breaches to then marry this data together and get the full set of credentials they need to perform the actions that they're engaged in. Last year alone, 1,500 79 data breaches were recorded in 2017. This is a 45% uptick 
from 16 as well, too. And the most vulnerable are the uh, the demographics of 30 to 39 year olds uh, who have brought forward the uh, highest level of complaints to the FTC uh, as well, too. But age doesn't matter. They're after uh, credentials. They're after values and assets that they can monetize and use. We recognize how these challenges drip into the uh, vertical of the travel agencies and what takes place and how it impacts your bottom line. What we do know in our extensive work and research and support to the community, that an additional, hundred, first of all, uh, 530 million worth of ADMs are issued each year. That's an additional cost. Well, uh, there is an additional 150 million of a, an administrative spend that needs to be focused on the settlement of these $530 million worth of ADMs. This is an additional 28% cost factor. So it's painful enough that we know that we have to deal with an ADM. Then we also have roughly a 28% cost factor in the reconciliation and the proof of uh, addressing these ADMs. What's also interesting is the value of these tickets as well too. In, in 2016, the average ADM was $661 US. 2017, it was $887. Uh, and then they're coming in at this point in time at $1,047 being the average value of each ADM. So fortunately, to some degree, the, va the volume of ADMs is decreasing through proper coding and uh, uh, communications through the variety of different associated entities. However, the value of these ADMs is increasing substantially as well too. And we recognize how that impacts the bottom line of the travel agent community. We also oh, know Tony? from our research, yes. I'm just gonna interrupt uh, with a question before we get too far along. I'm just gonna take a step back and something that you had mentioned, a question came in. Uh, the light solution that you mentioned, uh, this question is, what is like the number or the value uh, it would bring to us, bring to smaller accounts? Like what is that impact? Please give me that question again, Judy. Yeah, it's the light, you mentioned something called the light solution. Uh, and what is the impact of that, the, like the value um, that that would bring to smaller agents? Thank you. Uh, we have a, I, I have a couple of slides that will help address that and the objective, okay. just to give you a, a precursor on it now, and we'll, we'll get into it a little further in a moment. The objective is to empower the travel agent community with tools that are being used at the institutional level. These are the institutions that are taking in 30 to $35 billion a year in e-commerce revenue and have to deal with uh, substantial fraud numbers. And these very tools that the institutions are using, we are putting together to serve this community a per se a slight version, which will give some degree of analytics, decision-making processes, and fraud-related scores on each and every transaction. That in itself is uh, uh, intended to support the a little bit of due diligence before the acceptance of the ticket or pushing it through the GDS environment and to trim down this 28% cost factor that is showing itself in ADM. So that's what the purpose is there, and I will have a slide that will speak to that a little bit more. Okay, great, Tony. So what I think we're hearing is then that kind of light solution would help um, protect against fraudsters from using cards from the dark web. Is that true? And you'll probably and get a little is, bit more into that. And that is absolutely correct, yes. Okay, great. Okay, we'll continue on then. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Uh, we do know that uh, through our statistics, our work with the uh, ARC organization and IATA as well too, and uh, Focus Right, uh, that uh, roughly around 2.24% of the transactions are being rejected due to fraud. This is the agency size of one to 10 million. Uh, this is the, uh, the the one sector that uh, is, uh, in in our opinion, of the greatest challenge. There, those that are doing 10 million or more do have a budget 
They do have the tools. They do have the ability for seven-figure uh, solutions that they're able to uh, underwrite. Certainly, that cannot be done at the travel agent level. We also know that the percentage of bookings reviewed that are suspect of fraud uh, are in the area of 13% for this very channel as well, too. I am going to assume that the lower numbers for those that do under $1 million per year is because the bulk of the transaction might be face-to-face -face consumer and potentially with a portfolio that you know well of repeat users. When you get to this middle market here, this is where the fraudsters know to slip into because the lower uh, uh, end of the uh, the lower tier there knows that it's often face-to-face -face and known customers. The higher tier there of 10 million plus have very sophisticated fraud tools. The most vulnerable tier is right in the middle between 1 million to 10 million. And these fraudsters know that, and that's why they're focused and targeted in that area as well, too. Unfortunately, this means that their staff cost associated with it that needs to undertake the process of a manual review. It's our understanding from surveys from this community that roughly about seven, slightly more than seven people are involved in performing manual reviews for suspect fraud cases. And I would imagine that those tools are bin lookups. Those tools are um, uh, maybe a Google research or a social media research and a variety of other, and your internal proprietary lists as well, too. But unfortunately, it doesn't give you the full view of what's taking place with these fraud actors as they're engaged in many continents all over the uh, globe. So when you look at some of the initiatives and the best practices that are in progress at this point in time, and fortunately, they're getting uh, more vocal over these last few quarters and last year, some of the practices advised to the re for the retail consumers is to obviously check very thoroughly for the documents that have been provided. Check that the billing address is real and is accurate. We all note a high risk of fraud when the departure is in one week or even in a shorter time frame. It's certainly one of the triggers of the, uh, the OTAs and the airline brands themselves, uh, the time between the purchase and the departure. Uh, be aware of high fraud itineraries as well, too, in particular one-way purchases. So you should look at them with a stronger uh, cautious filter as well, too. We encourage the use of negative database tools to search name or email addresses for any previous reported fraud as well, too. And, of course, your uh, authentication tools uh, uh, that are available to you. And then to communicate within your hierarchy. Uh, either your branch manager or if there's a direct connection with the airline itself when something looks suspicious. Uh, over on the corporate side, it's very important to ensure that the person who's calling is truly an active employee of that corporate account. And when in doubt, check it out. Uh, we've heard stories where people have called after hours, get a hotline, and are able to talk people into booking a couple of flights for them and they turned out to be very sophisticated fraud actors as well, too. It's extremely important to utilize the corporate email uh, as well, uh, too, and then watch out for fishing expeditions, which are on the rise as well, too, from those that have broken into a corporate account, hijacked the emails, and are using those emails and those connections to do a variety of fraudulent activities that I, we've seen them type up invoices and get urgent pay on invoices. We've seen them reach in there and buy a host of airline tickets, business class, very rich tickets as well too. So they know what they're doing in that area. And we always assume with the best of intentions that we're dealing with a good operator, but that's not always the case as well too. And certainly the company's credit card should only be charged once you've confirmed that passenger is an active and authorized employee as well, too. Some of the other best practices that are taking place is the law enforcement agencies have been uh, releasing campaigns to the consumer sector. Uh, very aggressive in uh, Europe uh, lately. We uh, hope and expect to see more in the uh, U.S. market as well, too. But just recently, June of 18, just a few months ago, 
your poll rolled out a two week long program called Too Good to Be True. And it was a campaign over aware of to raise awareness of airline ticket and fraud amongst the holiday makers in front of summer travel. This will get another uptick in front of the seasonal holidays at the end of the year. Uh, we're seeing these, uh, you'll see this World Cup uh, for 49 euro uh, down here on the bottom. Uh, that was one of the actual campaigns that was uh, there as well, too. So the Europol agencies and other law enforcement agencies around the world are doing a campaign to make the consumer aware of uh, uh, if it's too good to be true, don't buy it. Because there are current mediums now where you can buy these tickets on uh, a Facebook uh, on a Craigslist and a variety of different methods as well, too, that the consumer, unbeknown to the actor, takes advantage of a lower price point and, and books a ticket, purchase a ticket from a, uh, a bad actor. So we've uh, they've also been advising the uh, consumer in this campaign to go official, look for the ARC or IATA logo on a company's website uh, uh, before uh, continuing with the transaction. And do your research, ensure that the company is legitimate, check out for customer reviews if this is a new site that you are getting into. Uh, check for secure payment uh, protocols uh, as well, too, uh, when it is a BitPay or a MoneyGram or Western Union or a PayPal as the only form of payment, that in itself should raise a red flag as well too. Use your instincts. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And then to report it, keep the evidence and report it to your local police as well too. So this is a part of the consumer campaigns that are being initiated by the law enforcement community as they watch this problem grow bigger and bigger every year. If the problem were curving itself and going lower, they might not put as much pressure on these consumer campaigns as they are, but this problem continues to infiltrate the entire commerce market around the world. Some of the actions that they participate in, uh, and Perseus works very closely with the law enforcement community around the world, uh, is what we call Global Airline Action Days. These are days where the merchants, being the airline brands and some of the OTAs, allow a fraudster to travel through on a ticket that they know is uh, suspect. So they allow them to travel through, and then what happens is the law enforcement community, through our Perseus tool, communicate with the bank, the airline industry, the credit card schemes, and then, of course, the uh, uh, the travel industry, uh, some of our organization, ARC plays a very strong role in this capacity as well, too. All parties communicate together through an online secure platform provided by Perseus. And in this last instance that we had, we had 63 airlines participate, six online travel agents. This touched 61 countries. We had feet on the street in 226 airports. Uh, manned by the law enforcement community, had 298 suspicious transactions we allowed to go through and detained, interviewed, and arrested 195 at these respective airports. The intent is to disrupt and disturb them from the current flow of business. Every time we do an activity of this nature, which is roughly twice a year, we see fraud in general tick down for a short period of time, mind you, five, seven, nine days, and it eventually starts to crawl up. But what the fact of the matter is, we like to interrupt them, disturb them, and crack into these rings whenever possible. So Perseus is very instrumental, as is ARC and the law enforcement community, in interrupting these fraudsters while they're in motion. A little more on the Perseus solution being the industry solution. It's a community and fraud prevention platform. And we cooperate well with all of our partners in the area of uh, accumulating fraud recorded data by these actors. So we have merchants across the globe who are uploading their fraud data, adding daily to the strength of this database. 
as fraudsters do not limit their activities to one industry or region, there's a frequent overlap of 35% between the merchants. So in effect, we know that if you gave us a fraud file or a file of credit card chargebacks and we ran that through our database, that we're gonna have in excess of 35% of those actors already in our database, if not more. Uh, the Perseus community consists of over 150 members from around the world, and we are in excess of 40 countries at this point in time. So we are throughout Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Middle East, and the Pacific Rim uh, as well, too. Uh, and this is the uh, a listing, in effect, of the various different uh, contributors to our database and the recordings that we have of these fraud actors uh, from uh, through the course of the years. We partner and have partnered and have uh, others partner with us uh, with a variety of the major players in this ecosystem, uh, all for the sake of trying to prevent fraud uh, across the spectrum. You'll see uh, one of our main partners of ARC, uh, UATP as well too, IATA, some of the payment providers of Wirecard, some of the orgs of uh, Alta and the European Fraud Prevention Group, payment providers of Adion and Genico, WorldPay, uh, CyberSource to certify ACI, Data Cash. These are all fraud prevention solutions that reach into the Perseus database to empower and, and to enrich their database for the sake of their portfolio of users. Perseus has three different services available to the community. The common one that we're talking about here today is the Perseus solution. It's a fraud intelligence platform. It's integrated with all the major players. It has customized uh, scoring models and also provides the opportunity for in-depth manual review of any particular cases. We have a freemium, a free blog site if you will, which consists of around 400 analysts within that and organizations. This is by invitation only, and it's a platform whereby knowledge and information can be exchanged amongst those that are in this environment, and it is free of charge, for, for, uh, uh, powered by Perseus, effectively to empower the community further. And our third product is that of the fact tool. This is store tool. This is connected exclusively to the merchants, the banks, and the law enforcement agencies in which they can communicate to one another, confirm these cases, and catch fraudsters in the act of performing uh, what they do best, and that's committing fraud. The data sharing platform uh, is where one merchant might see a transaction of another, and they look at the, uh, we look at the patterns, and then we report this uh, to those that are making a query on a particular case as well, too. When you look at Perseus in numbers, you'll see that over on the right, over 28 million na negative data elements. We empower over 650 analysts that use the solution on a daily basis. We check over 200 million transactions on an annual basis. This is the brand names submitting their transactions to the Perseus environment before accepting that transaction. We also intake roughly around six to 8,000 new fraud uploads on a weekly basis. Now that is a good number for our platform to serve those that we serve, but in itself, it's a scary number to think that every week, another six to 800,000 new fraud cases are being identified. We have over 3.2 billion positive data elements in excess of 100 decisions that are performed by our AI algorithms. And in addition, roughly around 10,000 fraud clusters identified, in which I'll speak to uh, shortly. The, the way that the solution works is that a merchant checks a transaction so they submit uh, a few particulars, the PNR, the email address, name of the passenger, a few other characteristics of that nature, and they get a score back. It could be a low score uh, if it is uh, looking uh, as a good transaction in the area of 23. And then if it is a fraud actor, 
that score might be anywhere from 80 to 100. A high score of 100 is good reason to potentially uh, decline the transaction. However, and you can decline it or you can do a further manual investigation into the platform. So you take action based on the score that you have there. A low score might indicate it's worthy of accepting the transaction. There's no reason, no characteristics to be concerned of the transaction against the database of 150 airline brands and OTAs that have submitted information on this individual. And if it's a high score, that's where you want to take caution and either automatically decline that transaction or have the opportunity to reach in and do a manual investigation to look further into how that works. This is what the landing page looks like when you submit a transaction. Now, mind you, the, the larger institutions do so by way of an API. We might deal with 200,000 transactions a day for any one single brand. Uh, but in the area of a manual search, which is our objective to enable the travel agent community with, where you can type in the information on the actor, and then it'll give you a read or based on the email, phone number, domain, first name, uh, uh, and the zip and the IP address and other characteristics of that transaction as well too. In this instance here, you'll see that the score was 91. It was found in Perseus roughly 18 times, checked uh, frequently by other providers as well too. And there could be a variety of characteristics that have this, this uh, score at 91. So when you have an opportunity and able to do a search on somebody that you're suspect of, then you'll get an AI score out of the Perseus database and then you can take action based on that score. And there are a lot of characteristics in this database that can help in that area. I want to pause for a moment, Judy, to see if you have any questions before I roll off of this slide. Uh, hi, Tony. Thanks. I do have a couple of questions, actually. Um, one is, uh, how do I get an invitation to Fraud Chasers? Uh, the invitation has to come through a, a, a source that's already in Fraud Chasers. So they would put that request over to uh, 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 Doug, uh, if you will, please, if I may assign that to you, Doug. <laughs> and uh, in doing so, Doug can contact our support team to enable them access in. But it cannot just be anybody. It needs to be somebody who's in this value uh, chain. So we can support that through the ARC team. Okay, great, great. Uh, and so if someone's interested in that, they can contact us, and I will provide that information um, at the end of this session, uh, how they contact um, ARC in regards to that. Another question that's come in, if I load data to Perseus and have fraud identified, are there any guarantees that I'm not making a decision that could lose business for my agency? That's kind of a mouthful, well, that but... Yeah, no, that's a good question and uh, a fair question and a frequent one uh, at that as well, too. Our responsibility is to report on the characteristics of this actor as we know this actor. And you will find when you do a deep dive in here, you might see that this actor is impacted by British Airways, the EasyJet, Lufthansa, Air Canada, uh, Viva Columbia, United Airlines, so forth and so on. And then it is up to the travel operator to decide whether they want to take that transaction or not. So we cannot guarantee that if you uh, reject this transaction, that it was a, a good actor because they could have turned leaf. And at the same time, uh, on a, a, uh, a fraudulent, uh, or pardon me, a good transaction, we can't uh, say for certain uh, as to whether it should be accepted or rejected. We can highlight the fact that it warrants a manual investigation. And when you drill down into the database and see some cases where this actor has used a U.S. issue card and, uh, and booked the flight out of the West Coast, uh, Ivory Coast, uh, Africa for somebody traveling from Paris to Toronto, then you might find enough characteristics in there to turn that one down. So we don't provide guarantees, we provide the tools 
to give you the assurances to make the right decision for your business model. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Tony. I have a couple more, if that's okay, before we continue yes. on. Okay. Yes. Um, approximately how many customer data points are used to come up with a final score? I think that's There's what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. There is... Uh, uh, there's over a, a, a hundred decisions that are taken into account in the uh, AI decision tree, and that's this lower cluster here to the left of the screen. So what we do is we look at the, uh, the history of that actor, the IP address of that actor, is that actor associated in any other criminal fraud clusters as well too that we have strong records on, uh, the billing phone number, the age of that uh, uh, email address, how many times they've changed the email addresses, how many different uh, aliases that they've used where we have a fingerprint on them, but they might use five or six different aliases uh, in, the con in, in conducting business towards their, you know, fraud uh, model and such. And this is all factored into our artificial intelligence where there's over 100 decisions that are taken into account to optimize the right decision-making tree to give you a score. So a, on a manual approach, somebody could easily spend anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, if not an hour or two, going down a rabbit hole, trying to put all these pieces together on this particular actor, whereby the, uh, the algorithms in our environment collect all this information and bring it back in a nanosecond. So uh, many decisions are involved in, in that process uh, as well, too. When you look at the top left of the screen and you see an example of a fraud cluster, many times we'll, we will see an actor out on the fringes of this fraud cluster, but he's got associated transactions with a kingpin inside that fraud cluster. And these are just uh, subordinates, if you will, performing transactions for this kingpin as well too. So we have links to these known fraud clusters with over 10,000 of them around the world that are in our database and the association between this current fraud actor or suspect, mind you, to uh, uh, their relationship and the amount of joint transactions they've done with, within this fraud cluster as well too. And that's part of the intelligence that comes out of the Perseus database and providing the scoring that it does for its users. Okay, it's very involved. Um, thank you, Tony. I have another question that's come in, um, and you probably have said this, um, but I just in case I wanna make sure we address it. Uh, does the fraud t uh, score uh, tool look at data such as city pairs, uh, country, flight departure time, and booking? It does take it into yes, it does take it into account. Uh, one ways, high risk markets, uh, the O and D markets as well too. Uh, we've got a good bit of data on uh, some of the hot spots around the world as well too, uh, and these, some of these one way tickets. So yes, that is all taken into account as well too. Okay, great. Um, here's another question, and then we'll I'll let you continue on. Uh, do I have to share my own uh, suspected fraud incidences to see fraud data from other travel merchants? You know, that is a great question. Thank you for posing that one. Uh, it, it will serve the community best. Uh, uh, do you have to to uh, see other data from uh, the community? Yes, you do. If you don't bring in your data, you'll get a one-pane view and if you want to reach down to be able to see who this fraud actor has impacted, how many times the latest uh, time that they impact this brand, that is, uh, we co-serve our community in the same manner that they serve the community. As a result, if you provide your data into the environment, you'll have the opportunity to see everybody else's data. If it's a one-way street and you don't want to provide your data into the environment, you'll get a single pane view without the ability to drill down into it further. And it's only fair that it be positioned that way to encourage and motivate others to do the same and also to support the community with additional fraud cases that you have as an independent operator, but it might serve somebody else on another continent. 
Thank you, Tony. Uh, we have a few more questions, but I think I'm going to let you continue on for a little bit, and then we will pick questions up again in a few moments. Perfect. Thank you, Judy, and everyone, thank you. Uh, Perseist is a go-to database that is accessed by many of the industry's major solution providers. We currently have API integration with uh, the majority of the power names out there, WorldPay, WorldPay, Risk Guardian, Certify, CyberSource, ACI, and uh, others as well, too. And what they do is they reach into the Perseus database to enrich the quality of their scoring mechanisms. So because Perseus is exclusively in the travel sector, probably has the longest footprint in the travel sector uh, as well, too, as a community database, and uh, whereby, respectfully, many broad solution providers are in other verticals as well, too, e-commerce, uh, shoes, purses, electronics, banking, you name it. So when it comes to the travel sector, they reach into the Perseus database to enrich a score, and then the user has the opportunity to click through the score that they're reading and automatically get into the Perseus database. I point this out because this is the institutional solution that we provide with some of the, the, the major organizations. And, uh, and then further, in serving this community, we provide an extensive amount of BI work as well, too, in the business intelligence. So we we're able to show the hot spots of some of the IP addresses, uh, the latest trends uh, that are going on. South America is getting hit pretty hard in the last 18 months time frame. You'll see they've got the highest uh, hot spot right here on the heat map. Uh, we've got in just in the last uh, uh, 12 months time frame, 362,000 new fraud records. We've got 11 million fraud elements and close to 300,000 new IP, IP addresses of these fraud actors as well, too. So between the integrations with the majors and the BI work that we provide to the analyst community, we provide a strong value to our partner chain, and that is to help form a united front against fraud and discuss the, the, the suspicious cases with other analysts in the community, and also signal trends through the early combined data and communications that we, as Perseus, being a data hub, have access to that a, a lone ranger or a brand out there themselves might not have access to. So it's our intent to enable the travel agent community to have access to tools that are used by the institutional analysts all in an effort to minimize and decrease these fraud, uh, the impact of fraud. And, and the results are in the area of decreasing these fraud costs. Manual checks will not only improve the quality of uh, early fraud detection, but they can be done in minutes rather than potentially uh, half hour, hour, or two hours. And in-depth research and historical fraud case information all leads to less of a fraud ratio, higher conversion ratio as well too, dripping down to the retention of revenues and commissions. And I want to back up for just a moment on that higher conversion ratio because we talked about the decline, the rejection of cases by not only the travel agent community, but also the OTA community and that of the airline community as well too. They don't want to turn down a transaction. They just want to get empowered with enough information that they can make the right decision and have a good, strong conversion ratio. We have worked with airline brands that, that started with a six and almost 7% rejection ratio. And these were brands also that were paranoid in the sense that they once had as high as a seven and eight percent fraud ratio. And by providing the right tools and the right analytics and the best practices, we were able to reduce these fraud cases, fraud losses down to 1.6 and bring their rejection ratio down to the two percent, which is more realistic for the community. So the conversion ratio where you can capture those revenues and do it with some degree of confidence is just as important as preventing the loss ratio as well too. And Perseus and its team of experts 
recognize that, and that's where we look forward to working with the community in that capacity. Open for Q&A, Judy, and everyone. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Tony, and thanks for putting some contact information here on the screen. I'm going to go over, um, before we leave this call this afternoon, some really important uh, fraud hotline information on our side. So I have a few questions before we get there. Uh, who Please. in the U.S. Yeah, thank you. Who in the U.S. are currently loading data into Perseus? I'm not allowed to divulge that uh, at this point, to this audience and at this point in time. To our contracted okay. users, I can, but you can uh, trust that there are major brands, OTAs, uh, in the U.S. and in every continent in our uh, world. Okay. Okay. Awesome. We understand that with privacy for sure. Uh, yeah. This is another question. Yep, and this is another question that came in. I am familiar with a certify. Are they going through Perseus to receive data uh, for their scoring tool? And again, not sure if you can answer it based on what you just said. Yeah, no, I can. I can. And what oh, Perseus okay. what does, yeah, what, what a certify does, and, and a certified cyber source ACI and the other fraud solution providers, when we work with that brand that is also used in a certify or a cyber source, that brand elects to empower or turn on the Perseus switch in their environment. So in a certified cyber source, ACI, WorldPay, Risk Guardian, all the other uh, fraud solution providers out there, only access the Perseus database when their client ask them to and then of course they have particular terms and conditions signed with the Perseus uh, environment as well too. So it's not a certify reaching in for every user they have in their portfolio, it's to certify enriching the scoring for that user when that user has elected to adopt Perseus as a third party database in that ecosystem. Okay, very good. Thank you, Tony, for uh, answering that one. Uh, here's another question that's come in. In our agency, we, re we rely on homegrown manual processes to identify fraud. Uh, can this tool replace what they do today? Well, that's a good question. And we're used to these homegrown proprietary lists and processes as well, too. I would say uh, it's a little bit hypothetical without me doing great due diligence on the, the nature of those internal tools that you have. I would say that you want to use the uh, Perseus score to supplement your internal processes and not necessarily replace them. And uh, we have some OTAs and, and larger agencies that are working on API calls meaning that they get an automatic read as soon as they put a transaction in, and then that bleeds over or populates over into their proprietary database as well, too. So there are a number of different ways in the usage of the Perseus uh, tool. It's uh, the data that it brings back, but I would be um, uh, potentially misinforming somebody to say, scrap your internal processes, and replace it, I would let them run side by side and complementary and let the due diligence and the results sort out that go forward path. Okay. Uh, here's another one that's come in. Uh, do you predict fraud increasing or decreasing in the near future for travel agents? Unfortunately, increasing, uh, and, and or let me, let me put it this way, to continue its current increase. And, and I say it that way because what we do know in working with the community is that they might get shut down by uh, trying to do a transaction with a brand, uh, an airline brand. And then in getting shut down in that, then they go over to an OTA or then they go to a code sharing and, uh, a website uh, from that brand and or an OTA. And then in some cases to the travel agent community. So they're very persistent and trying to secure that ticket. And they stay focused in that area, because mind you, they have nothing else to do. That's what they do for a living. And uh, and they're sleepless uh, uh, as well too, if I may add. They work all hours of the night and, and, and breaching into these environments. So the point being is that we're recognizing that any brand new OTA that opens up gets hammered with fraud right out of the gate. 
And I think these actors recognize that, that, that all the tools might not be in place. And it takes them a while to trim that down as well, too. What they do know is that the airlines, at least in the U.S. market, have it all the way down to 30 basis points, three-tenths of a percent of uh, their transactions are lost to fraud. The airline brands, the major brands that we all know here in the U.S. market, they have their systems down pretty good. So the fraud actors, they know that as well, too. Therefore, they're breaching into the loyalty sector to get a hold of these values and transaction opportunities. They're hitting the OTA market, and they're hitting the, uh, the, uh, the travel agent market as well, too. So that being said, with all the credentials that they have in their possession at this point in time, I would say that it's going to continue with its current upward tick of reaching into the travel agent community to steal from that sector. Great, Tony. I have a few more, um, and if anyone's on the phone and you still have a few questions, we have about four minutes, so I think I'll get to one or two more questions, and then I just want to go over contact information. Uh, here, let me just put here, um, a, a global question has come in in regards to if this presentation will be distributed, and we'll send this out, Tony, that's okay with you, correct? That is correct. Right, so uh, we will be, I'll be sending this out, actually, and a recorded version of this will be put and posted on the fraud website on arccorp.com at the end of the month. Um, we also have, um, just uh, looking at some things here, um, where, let's see, would you kindly email us a copy? I got, I covered that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what would some of the reasons be for trying to commit fraud through travel? I think that's one of the questions we've had raised here. Well, that's I think there's the I think there's multiple, but what are the major ones? Yeah, yeah, no, that well, the reason being that it's the easiest sector to re-monetize. So uh, you'll find actors all over the place that are advertising a cheap ticket. So they're able to secure, uh, let's say, let me keep it simple, in a two thousand dollar ticket, if you will, or itinerary, uh, if you will. And uh, they got it for free through a, uh, a breached uh, a card that's not reported as breached, mind you. They know they fall in the cracks there. They, they use a card that has not yet been reported. That's why you want to track the actor, not the card. Uh, so as a result of that, they'll get a $2,000 ticket that they can turn around and sell to somebody for $1,000. So quickly, they put $1,000 in their pocket, a secure transfer of those monies, Bitcoin, MoneyGram, Western Union, PayPal, uh, whatever the case might be, and, um, uh, and, and, and they're done. They're done. They did not have to receive electronic equipment that they bought online and move that out you know, those physical goods. These are all electronic goods, if you will. They did not have to receive a beautiful pair of shoes or a purse or anything of that nature and try to fence that out uh, as well, too. They, they're doing an electronic transaction that they don't even have to touch personally and can move that information along. So it's the low-hanging fruit. Then you factor in the high growth that's going on in a few continents as well, too, and the fact that there are over uh, uh, roughly 930 million uh, travel itineraries going on annually as well, too. That's a lot of people in motion. And uh, uh, as a result, uh, just about everybody would like an inexpensive ticket uh, to achieve that. And they're able to market that in, in a smooth way. So they're able to perform all this at their dining room table, if not on a park bench under a tree. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it, these days, for sure. Yeah. Um, and there have been a couple questions that have come in regarding cost. And, uh, Tony, I'm assuming I should direct those questions to, to you with the uh, contact information you provided here. Is that correct? That would be correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. If anyone mm -hmm. is interested in these tools, uh, Tony has general inquiries here at info at .com. Tony, they can also contact you directly as well. That is correct. Yep, at the Tony.ash at Perseus.com, and Tony also has his phone number here. We also have on the ARC fraud side, I want to just go over, uh, Tony has it listed here on his slide, which is the fraud hotline here at ARC, which is 855-358-0393. Uh, 
Uh, that is the hot fraud line. That is the hot fraud line. I think I'm saying that right. So, fraud hot line. <laughs> I guess it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> like the bat phone. Um, and also, Penarius's phone, um, excuse me, his email is here at chottington at rcorp.com. And Doug Nass is dnass at rcorp.com. But for all general inquiries, we really encourage you to email us at stopfraud at rcorp.com and use that hot, fraud hotline number, sorry about that, at 855 uh, Also, if you want to follow us throughout this exciting fraud month with um, Tony's presentation here and other things coming up on in the next weeks to come, you can follow us on social media at hashtag ARCPreventsFraud. Uh, so we encourage you to do that. We also will be, uh, in our tag, we'll be having um, all the next week's registrants coming up on Monday, you can go to arcorp.com under events and you'll have a list of the upcoming webinars next week. We have three. We have one on Wednesday the 12th with Ethica. We have one on September 13th with, I believe that's feature space. Again, two guest presenters. And then we have on Friday, we have our own um, in-house risk management risk manager for the company, uh, Adnan Jaffer. He's awesome, and he'll be talking a little bit about PCI and all and the importance of that. As always, you can contact me for any general questions, jhoward at artcorp.com, uh, and our customer care at cccc help at artcorp.com. I always want to call it triple C, so I hesitated. So CCC help at artcorp.com. Uh, always contact our help desk as well. Thank you all once again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Cornelius. Thank you, Doug. Um, and we'll be back again next Wednesday, and we hope to have you all joining us. Thanks again, everyone on the phone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.